1977, just a week before his death, Elvis Presley hosted a private party at Liberty Land in Memphis, Tennessee. He reportedly rode the Zippin' Pippin' over and over for two hours straight, a PTC wooden coaster that dated back to 1923. Elvis said that Zippin' Pippin' was his favorite ride. Turns out, Elvis had good taste. Zippin' Pippin would be shut down with the park on October 29, 2005. But the ride was too good just to let it fade away in history. Bay Beach is a small city-run park in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and they bought the rights to the name and the layout. Martin and Vlimix and the Gravity Group would take on the project, and on May 21st, 2011, the Zippin' Pippin' was reborn on the shore of Lake Michigan. I found my way to Bay Beach on June 27th, 2020, and I got two rides on this wooden coaster. This is my review of Zippin' Pippin'. First, a word about Bay Beach. This is the first city-run park that I've been to, at least that I know of. And this place is just wide open. It normally doesn't require admission, but because of the pandemic, they were limiting capacity, so we had to get a $5 wristband that was refundable when we left. That was just to make sure that no more than 2,000 people were in the park at any time. The park is half county fair, half public park. It's really bizarre how they have a mess of rides mixed in with playground equipment and anyone can walk right in from any direction. In the back of the park, you'll find the park's crown jewel, Zippin' Pippin'. You have to buy tickets to ride the rides, and Zippin' Pippin' takes four tickets. Each ticket is a quarter apiece, so do the math. A ride will cost you a grand total of one dollar. You can't beat that. So on a normal day, when they're not doing wristbands, you walk right in, pay a dollar, and ride. Okay, let's get down to the ride experience. Even though Zippin' Pippin' is a Gravity Group coaster, it uses PTC trains rather than Timberliners. This is because it borrowed the trains from the defunct Thunder Eagle at Race World in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Luckily, I didn't find any problem with this, even though I generally find these restraints to be the worst on any wooden coaster. I had enough tickets for two rides because I wanted to try it in the front and the back. I never made it to the front. I chose the ride twice in the back because it was that good. Let's take a look at the layout. You leave the station and take a right-hand turn up the lift hill. It levels off and you take a nice scenic right-hand turn that gives you a great view of the lake. And then you dive down that 63-foot, 50-degree drop that gives very good floater airtime in the back. I get way more airtime over this small, shallow drop than I do on Goliath, probably because you have some decent speed coming off that turnaround. You pop up into another full 180-degree turnaround. And this is where you notice the train making some weird movements around the bend. It really seems to shake left to right, which seems weird for a newer wooden coaster. But it really doesn't affect the ride. You dive back down, and then hit back to back to back airtime hills, all which provide some great floater airtime as you're being dragged over in the back. One more turnaround, which does the same janky wheel thing where the wheels go back and forth, and then the last run of airtime hills. The drop off the turnaround is great, and then you twist up so that you're running alongside the run of triple airtime hills. And let me pause it right there. Up to this point, I was super impressed. Every single hill had great floater airtime, and I have been disappointed so often with these small-scale wooden coasters at small parks, either being average or boring. But this, so far, was very good, and I was considering how I might rank this up. And then it happened. The Ejector Death Hill. I had no idea that this was here. I'm not lying. You can ask Bob from BK Photo Page. I was literally screaming my head off for about 10 seconds after this hill. I did a video about the best finales before I rode this, and this would have absolutely made my top 10. The airtime on that hill is seriously one of the greatest airtime moments of all time. There is one more little hill, which I'm not even sure if it has airtime, because I was still freaking out about the ejector death hill, and then it pops up into the brakes. That first ride was so good that I didn't even want to try the front row on our second ride. If we had more time at the park, I could have ridden this a bunch of more times, but we had to get to Little America before it closed, so we just had time for the two rides and then to get some footage. I needed to get a repeat ride in the back. The airtime you get while you're being dragged over each hill was awesome, and it's something that you can't get in the front. Maybe when you crest the hills, you can get some airtime like you do on Cornball Express, but when the airtime is that good as it is, don't mess with a good thing. 
And if the airtime over the ejector death hill was any stronger in the front, it may be too strong to enjoy. So I got an equally amazing ride in the back for ride number two. And even when expecting the ejector death hill, it still shook me to the core. Bay Beach is kind of far from any other park, two hours north of Little America. So unless you're in town for an early season Packer game, it's not exactly a park that you're gonna pass by on your road trip. But this place is so cool. I mentioned how cheap it was to show up and ride the Zippin' Pippin, and it also really has cheap food. Feel free to get some food here and not wait till you get out of the park because the food is just about as cheap as you'll find anywhere. And the ride you'll get on Zippin' Pippin is absolutely worth it. Out of 439 coasters that I've ridden, this one ranks up at number 30. The good floater air on every single hill is great on its own, but the ejector death hill is the cherry on top. Get up here, ride it, you won't regret it. That's it for kind of a short video on Zippin' Pippin'. If you've ridden this, let me know what you think. And if you've done both the front and the back, let me know how they compare. Again, I would have loved to have done both, but I made the choice to get a repeat ride in the back because it was so spectacular. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like, and I'll see you guys all next time.